Well, the pressure is still on for Congress to include a public option in its final health care reform bill. Lawmakers returning to work Monday to reconcile the House and Senate version. My next guest voted against the House bill and says he can't support reform that includes a government option. So will he support the bill if it looks more like the Senate's version without the public option? Let's find out to Republican Congressman John Shimkus of Illinois. He joins me now. Uh, first of all, let's find out why your opposition to the public option. Well, it's just the, the basic uh, principle that I believe, you know, Barney Frank, Jan Schakowsky, Howard Dean, and their statement that the public option is just the gateway to a one-payer system. And if you have a one-payer system, government-run health care, then that will eventually lead to ration care, which is the government then deciding what care you get based upon whatever variable they choose to decide. So that's why I'm adamantly opposed to the public option. But, Congressman, do you think any sort of health care bill uh, will be a springboard to ultimately a uh, public option and even single payer? Because it seems to me that Bill Clinton sort of rallied the troops not too long ago and said, let's just get anything in there. Once it's law, we can start to build on it. Well, yeah, I think that those of us who've seen them operate for many, many years now know they believe in incrementalism and keep moving the ball down the field to get to their ultimate objective, which is the government control of the health care sector, which is large, a large sector in, in our economy. So uh, that's why even what the Senate has done and call them triggers, uh, states involved. It's all a way for the government to get more involved in, in that activity versus allowing the market to make uh, to to incentivize that there's a way to provide catastrophic health insurance to all Americans through the private pi private sector and the private market. So what kind of pressure uh, is going on right now behind closed doors? I mean, it's been pretty quiet. Obviously, the attempted terrorist attack is taking all the headlines. But uh, what kind of pressure right now do you think you and your colleagues are, have been under? Could you share that with us? Well, I don't. Republicans are in opposite, in opposed. So <laughs> yeah. if there's pressure going on, it's going on with conservative Democrats and and what's attempting to to get the those who are really with the one payers to keep them quiet to accept uh, mostly a, a Senate bill and then bring in those supposed pro-life Democrats to say the Nelson language really isn't that bad. Uh, my colleague and friend Bart Stupak, a Democrat from Michigan, says it is bad. Uh, so that's, I think that that's where the pressure is. Let's get something rather than nothing and, and keep quiet on the expansion of abortion services with pa taxpayers' dollars. That, that is probably the untold story that's going on right now. And we don't have a lot of time left, but could you handicap what you think ultimately is going to come out of this? Uh, what's the odds on this actually including a public option? Oh, I think the public option defined by the House bill is, is, is dead. I think they have to pass the Senate uh, language on the insurance plan. Um, so I, I don't think I would say I'd be surprised if it's 10 percent. All righty. Thank you very much, Congressman. Uh, Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year to okay. you, too, and Merry Christmas. Meantime, doctors caught in the middle of this health care fight. Uh, we have doctors.